Good evening and welcome to the first episode of the Founding Fathers Forum. A forum that is born out of the yearning of Nigerian youths for a focus as their world seems to drift apart. Today there have been more questions asked about the Nigerian nationhood from street corners to palaces and conference halls. The echoes of this question keep resounding more than ever before. Are we a nation, they ask. If we are, where is our national will? Nigeria, a nation on the move, but some say we are moving in circles. Because Nigeria is a nation in search of itself, in search of a will to trust forward, in search of its soul, so it can finally find an inspiring call to move from a country to nationhood. A country whose greatest characteristic is craving for change is now developing a phobia for the future because most of the changes it has got have seemed to be regressive rather than progressive. As our values vanish and our confusion grows into fear and anger, this forum is convinced that we left something behind and for us to chart a proper way we have to go back to the basics and to thoroughly examine the visions of the founding fathers. The positive stance that they took to bring about a nation. This will be our sojourn throughout this program, the examination of their vision and its ramification in all aspects of our lives. A program on the Founding Fathers of Nigeria will not be complete without the late Abubaka Tafawa Balewa, Sir Hakmadu Belo, Chief of Bafemi Awulawa, Sir Ladoke Akintola, Dr. Namdi Azikiwe, Dr. Keum Badiwe, and a whole lot more. With a view to find out where we went wrong and pick up positive aspirations in every possible way, Nigeria has an uncanny history of being founded on the ambition and vision of one man who set out to conquer choice West African lands for British domination, but above all, for his own economic fulfillment. Nigeria came off the legacy of Torbman Goldie and his Royal Niger Company dreams. From his creation of the company in 1877, the Royal Niger Company mauled all opposition along the way, from African chiefs to fellow British companies that reached the territory before it did. The Germans and the French were not spared. The Royal Niger Company was not just a company that was interested in trade with the natives. It interfered with the administration of the natives and dominated their politics. That was how Nigeria became a British protectorate. The tangle with the British by some African chiefs in those days gave birth to what historians call African nationalism. Prominent among these chiefs were the Jaja of Opobo, Oba of Erame of Benin, Nana of Shekiri, and Kusoko of Lagos. That was the era before Lord Lugard lumped together the southern and northern protectorates, and his wife christened it Nigeria in 1898, including the colony of Lagos. Now we have come a long way, and from a rich history too, but 
our present is littered with broken promises, dimming hopes and fractured dreams. Our diversity has become a source of division. This surely was not the vision the Founding Fathers envisaged for us. In our era, when communications amongst people of diverse ethnic and cultural groups was far, far limited, the Founding Fathers were able to move from rancors to rallies that produced political rhythm that gave us a country. Paltry as our resources were, we had national education that catered for the need of that era and produced great models for the ensuring generation. School was a place of learning, not just a place for holding down kids for a couple of hours in a day. Education had meaning far beyond the meal ticket it has come to symbolize now. Today, our educational system is an arena of chaos, another blurred vision. The economy seems delinked from the educational system. about the economy. We plunged from a multi-crop economy to a mono-product economy. Our ground-up pyramids of the 60s disappeared along with our bales of cotton. We have moved from a palm oil exporting nation to an importing one. Our entrepreneurial skills seem only capable at producing primordial enterprises. Our oil buoyed economy is emburdened by debts and fragmented policies. Our rail system, once a symbol of pride and appreciable service, is now a source of pain for the nation. All these problems ravage us, along with our health institutions in dire straits. The Founding Fathers Forum, in subsequent programs, is going to deal with specific issues with a bid to X-ray the problems and prefer solutions from the standpoint of the platform our forerunners presented us and how best to build on them. Our culture, which in most aspects stresses assiduity and anthropology of hard work, is today being distorted as a dance and celebrative culture. In days gone by, 
those same hands that sparked the drums tilled the land and planted the crops. In the vision of the Founding Fathers, we are bound to find things we left behind that have made our foundation so wobbly. second episode, we shall be speaking with Chief Bob Obuagu, the Managing Director of Champion Newspapers and the Chairman of the Organizing Committee of the late Dr. Michael Opara Remembrance Rally. Here now are some excerpts from that interview. So that was the crisis. And in that crisis, uh, there was this election, which of course swept them away and uh, uh, Zik became the premier of Eastern Nigeria and uh, he saw, as I, I, one would imagine, the, 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 the great potential in Dr. Obara and he appointed him first uh, Minister of Health and thereon he became Minister of Agriculture. And then in 59, I think it was 59, Zik had to be called to higher national uh, duties. He came to Lagos and uh, by his own wisdom and the wishes of the people, he nominated Dr. Obara as the premier, the leader 
and the leader of the house. You know, in those days, once the elections are held, it is within the house, the house that uh, the they, they appoint the leader of the house and the premier, and then, of course, the leader of the opposition. So that's how he became premier. Well, having done that, uh, he had this insatiable uh, spirit for activities. Don't forget, he, Dr. Okpara was one of the best surgeons that Nigeria had from, yeah, from the Yaba. That's, that's one fact that is really uh, yes, but, quite a lot. Uh, he still ran his clinic at Omwaya, helping out with operations at the Methodist um, uh, Hospital at Amachara and at the then Queen Elizabeth Hospital, which was owned by the Protestant churches. But as minister, as a premier now, his old concept changed uh, from medicine to a multitude of things. But more importantly, his uh, emphasis was on how to feed the people. Not just the people, how to make Eastern Nigeria self-sufficient. And please forgive me if I become a little sentimental here, uh, because uh, I worked for an organization that was one of the instruments he used, the Eastern Nigerian Development Corporation. Uh, and we had uh, these instructions about growing all the food that would be eaten in the East without buying from anywhere, including raising of animals. That is to say, starting a cattle ranch, which we did at Obudu, yes. so that the East would be self-sufficient. Then, of course, there was this boom uh, in poultry. He got this American, uh, Mr. Davis, who we all started calling Chicken Davis, who started this rather ex explosive uh, explosion in uh, production of uh, poultry to the extent that everybody was eating chicken. chicken. You are raising your own. He ensured that his ministers, every minister had a poultry farm and had a farm. In fact, it was one of the, if you like, unwritten conditions. That's you just have to start feeding yourself. And uh, this, uh, 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 at this point, I, I cannot hold it back. Uh, because he, he so motivated the people that everybody was rearing, had, had his own poultry. At the point, I remember, one of the farmers came in a pickup van to the Premier's Lodge, that was where he was living, and wanted to gain access to see the Premier. And of course, the security people wouldn't let him. He created such a scene that uh, Dr. Okpara heard it from his office and, and wondered what was going on. Then they told him that someone there was being a nuisance. He said, let him come in. The man came in with a pickup full of eggs and said, look, you premier, you asked us to go and to a red chicken and grow eggs. Nobody's eating my eggs. So what do you want me to do with this? I brought it to you. <laughs> that immediately started a chain of thought because later that afternoon, a meeting was called in the Premier's Lodge of the Minister of Agriculture, Minister of Rural Development, the ENDC, the uh, planning, uh, economic planning with uh, Paris Okibo, Dr. Paris Okibo, as the uh, principal, he was then the chief uh, economic, government economic planner. And when we got uh, to that meeting, he said to us, he did not want anybody's comments that we must start, go and hammer out uh, uh, an organization that would take care of all the eggs produced in this country. So, for instance, why shouldn't the, 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 the secondary schools, the children in secondary schools, eat eggs, at least two eggs a, a, a week? If they did, that, all the eggs produced would be <laughs> would be gone, yes. could have been marketed, build um, refrigerated vans or something, various rural areas, so that farmers would take their eggs there and 
they'll be sold. That's a very small matter, but which influenced, gave birth to a huge organization with a permanent secretary appointed to look after the marketing of eggs. Join us next week for more on Dr. Michael Okbara. Till then, it's bye for now.